Hello, this is Jenny from Designs with Paper. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I have another Christmas card for you as part of my Christmas card and craft series for 2021. And today I'm going interactive. I will be creating a pop-up box card that will fit in a regular A2 size envelope. And the main focal point of my card is going to be these super awesome Christmas dinosaur stickers I found at Hobby Lobby. Because dinosaurs and Santa hats, um, yes please. I will be starting with a piece of red cardstock that is eight and a half inches by five and a half inches. And I pulled out my scoreboard here and we're going to be doing some scoring. So with the long side of your paper up at the top, score at the two inch, the four inch, the six inch, and the eight inch. And that will leave me just a little half inch section on the right hand side, which is perfect. It's exactly what I need to have happen. And so once I have got that done, I am going to go ahead and my paper the other direction with the short side up and make a score line on that side. So with the five and a half inch side up, I will score on the two inch line. Now really this could go anywhere from two inches to two and a half inches. I prefer it on the two inch line so it's a little bit easier for me to work with but that's just how I like it. So we have this little half inch section at the top left and then there's two inch squares on the top of this paper which as we're working will become the bottom of the paper <laughs> only because I'm right handed. So I'm going to grab my honeybee scissors or cutter bee scissors or whatever these are called, my knockoffs, my EK success, whatever. <laughs> and I am going to cut that little one half inch flap off of the side. And then I will take my scissors and cut down each score line only to that two inch line, the same place I stopped cutting for that flap. And I know my annotations are right in the way there. I apologize for that. I was trying to make them easily visible. <laughs> I have cut down all of those score lines just to that two inch line. So I have a piece of cardstock here with little flaps on it. And I'm going to go ahead and fold on all of my score lines now. And I'm using my bone folder to kind of burnish those folds so that they fold nicely and I don't get any bumps or creaks, creases or cracking in my folds. You know how when you fold cardstock, sometimes it gets that weird, not smooth fold. I don't want that. Okay, so that little tiny flap, that is going to become the little piece that glues my, or adheres my cardstock together to create the box. When I am ready to fold. I was just pointing out there, don't fold down the left hand flap. For some reason, every time I make this card, the first time I make it after it's been a hot minute, I fold all the flaps. And then as soon as I fold the one flap, I remember, oh yeah, I wasn't supposed to fold that flap. So leave, I like to leave that one flap unfolded because it adds a little bit of strength and security to the back of the box. So I am going to go ahead and add a little bit of really strong adhesive to that little half inch flap and start adhering my box together. Sorry if it gets really loud all of a sudden, my kids are starting to come home from school. <laughs> I am using this tape and tear or tear and tape, whatever it's called, sequin tape I think it's sometimes called. Um, and I'm burnishing that on with my bone folder. This is a really strong dry adhesive. I prefer dry adhesive to liquid adhesive when I am making pop-up boxes just because I end up gluing my box together with liquid adhesive. Let's face it, it's me and liquid glue. Not my not my best thing. I am just going to line up the edge of that cardstock, the part that I did not fold down the top of, right along that fold line of that little tiny flap, and I will stick my bone folder up inside that box and kind of give it a nice burnish to make sure the um, adhesive sticks. So there's our box. We have the beginning of our box card. So the next thing I'm going to do is decorate the bottom flaps of my box. And I have picked out some cardstock. This is an old, not cardstock, sorry, pattern paper. This is an old pattern paper, probably stamping up because it's double-sided, but it's been in my scrap bin forever. And this piece of paper is one and three quarters inches wide by two and something inches long. And I, I wrote it on the screen there. <laughs> And I have cut three that size, and I am going to adhere them to three of the panels of this box, the, the front and the two sides. And I'm trying to make sure that I get them lined up as best as possible. I want the chevrons all going the same direction, and I want them to look 
like they used to be one piece of paper because they did. And I mostly did a pretty good job of lining those things up. I was really proud of myself. So the back piece is five and a quarter inches by one and three quarter inches wide. And I had forgotten to trim that down. So I'm just going to pull my little trimmer in here and trim that paper down. And I will adhere that with my ATG gun. I am using my tape runner here as opposed to the really strong adhesive because this part will stick. This is not the part that moves. I like the strong adhesive on the moving parts. So now we're going to decorate the box flaps. And these little squares of pa paper are one and three quarter inches square. So they're 1.75 by 1.75 inches. And I am just putting the reverse side of that chevron paper up so that it will coordinate and look pretty. And then we will put another one of those pieces on the inside of the back of our box. And again, that is five and one quarter inches by three and three quarters inches. And I will add my adhesive to the back and I'm going to kind of adhere this from the bottom end of the box to make sure that the margin on the top and the sides is the same without my big hands in the way. <laughs> and I will just use my bone folder to burnish that a little bit and make sure that it is adhered nicely. So here we are ready to make sure that our, our to get our card ready for the next step. And I'm just kind of moving it around, making sure that it's folding easily and is moving nicely. And the next part is to add the rails on the inside of this box for the dinosaurs to be attached to. So I have a number of pieces of paper that are a half an inch tall and two and three quarter inches wide or long, and they have been scored one half inch from each end. And those become the bendy part, the foldy part, or the moving part of the mechanism of the, the box. So I am going to go ahead and fold four of those little papers on those score lines. I think I only ended up using three. And it really just depends how many you want to fit into your box. I think with a half inch score line on the ends, you can only get about three. Because that, that's the spacing of the rails. And you'll see what I mean in just a minute. Because this is a moving part, I am again going to go ahead and use my tape and tear or tear and tape, I have really strong tape <laughs> and I will put a little piece on the folded end or the, the flappy end of each one of these pieces of little strips of paper. And this adhesive is super sticky and it's also kind of fidgety. <laughs> For the most part, this video is kind is real time. I wanted you to see that it did not take me very long at all to assemble this card. Now in all honesty, I had already assembled one before. <laughs> it had taken, it had been a long time since I made a pop-up box card and I wanted to make sure I could assemble it correctly. So I created one off camera before I filmed myself making another one just to make sure I knew what I was doing. And it's a good thing because that other one took me a hot minute. Okay. Now that I have adhesive on the ends of all of these little rails, I'm going to take the adhesive off of one end and fold that little flap down. And I'm going to line it up with the back, the part, that piece we didn't bend. I'm going to put the end of that flap right up in that corner and push it off to the side. The left-hand side is where I'm working right now. And I'll just kind of pinch that box closed to make sure that the adhesive adheres. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to peel that adhesive off if it ever will come off. The backing paper will ever come off. Kind of stuck down there. <laughs> the, 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 this is the real, this is real life crafting, right? And I'm again, going to stick that edge right down in the corner so that when I pinch it with my tweezers or pinch it with my fingers, it sticks to the side. So the adhesive is basically sticking to the left and right sides. So it's making kind of a, a really wide U piece of paper inside that box. And I'm just kind of pinching it back and forth here to make sure that the moving mechanism or that the, the cardstock is folding correctly so it will move. And I will do the same thing again with the next pieces of paper. And I'm just lining the end of that little strip up to the front of the one we already put in. I know, I, I don't think I'm very good at explaining this. So sorry about that. If I do anything that you don't quite understand, please get, leave me a comment. If you're trying to recreate this, if you want to know how to recreate this, shoot me a comment. I would be happy to 
help you understand my not so coherent ramblings. Every time I put one of those little rails in, I go back through and pinch the card shut on each side to make sure that it, it has adhered correctly and that the card is still foldable. And you can see I just about glued it to itself. So it's a good thing that I moved quickly. And for real, I'm in fast motion here. <laughs> I don't really move this fast. <laughs> and I'm just adding the third little rail in there. And that's about all that's going to fit. So I have three little rails inside my box for my dinosaurs to be adhered to. And again, when you fold it flat and pull up those flaps, it will fit right into a regular A2 size envelope. Okay, so how are we gonna get these dinosaurs in? Well, each one of those dinosaurs already has a little foam sticker, adhesive sticker, bubble thingy, what is it called? Foam adhesive, there we go, on the back of it. And I am going to use some more little pieces of red cardstock. One thing I need to make sure is that when I fold my box flat, nothing is hanging out the right or left side or it will get bent when I go to put it in the envelope. And for real, this might be the kind of card you hand deliver, not really put in the mail, or maybe put it in a padded envelope, a padded mailer. So the first dinosaur we're putting on there is the one that when I was in school, we called Brontosaurus. I don't know. I heard, I remember when I was a kid, they said, oh, there's no such thing as a Brontosaurus, but whatever, it's a Brontosaurus. <laughs> I have a nephew who knows the names of all the dinosaurs, like all the dinosaurs. So probably he could tell you the real name of this dinosaur, but I'm just going to call it Brontosaurus because I don't know. Dinosaurs were not my thing. The next one I'm going to adhere is this pterodactyl with the candy cane because I think the fact that he's flying is fabulous. I just think it's cool that the dinosaur was flying. I am using my ATG gun to adhere these dinosaurs in just in case I need to rearrange them. The next one is this T-Rex, Tyrannosaurus Rex, and he's kind of um, heavy and fidgety, and it takes a minute for me to get him in, standing up correctly. I had to rearrange things a little bit, and then I had to go back through and add a little bit more liquid adhesive because he just was a little heavy for that little piece of cardstock, so I kind of added a little more adhesive to glue him down. I will add this Triceratops. And then the last one is one that I don't know the name of either, but in the Land Before Times movies, he's called Ducky. So it's a ducky dinosaur. <laughs> okay, I have all my dinosaurs in, and it's time to put on a sentiment. So I have these Simon Says Stamp reverse sentiment strips, and these are the Christmas sentiment ones. And I will be using a couple of one of the big sentiments and one of the little sentiments. Um, I know the big one says Christmas time is here and the little sentiment, I don't remember. And my son already took this to school. He decided his um, counselor, who's been his best friend the last few weeks of school, needed to have this dinosaur card. And he took it to school for her before I did the voiceover for the video. <laughs> I think it says wishing well the happiness of the season or something like that. I am going to go ahead and trim this down. And very obviously these flaps are longer than, or these sentiment strips are longer than the flaps on my box. So I'm just going to cut it down. I'm going to cut in between Christmas and time and cut in between is here. And same thing on the next one, just cut in between the words so that it will fit on the flaps of my box. Um, I have seen, and I finally did break down and purchase the Simon Says Stamp sentiment strip dies because they work perfectly with these sentiment strips. Now these are printed on white paper and I don't want those white edges to show. So I am going to go ahead and pull out my black Sharpie and just go all the way around the edges to kind of fade that into the actual sentiment. One cool thing about these sentiment strips is because they are printed on with a um, laser printer, if you have heat adhering foil, like you would use in a meat machine or a laminator, you can foil these sentiments. Super cool. And the white ones, the ones that are black ink on white, also can foil and you'll have a foiled sentiment versus a foiled background. So I should try that. I should do that in one of my cards, right? Do a little bit of heat foiling. Duh, I've got the stuff. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, back to the card. I have the Sharpie and all the edges done, and I'm ready to adhere the sentiment down on my card. I am going to use my ATG gun. And again, I'm just making sure that everything is still moving. Those dinosaurs are kind of wonky, but I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm going to start over here on the left and just put Christmas on 
the left flap and go around to the center and the right hand sides. Super easy, not the most um, cohesive sentiment maybe, but because the font sizes are different in the two sentiment sentences, I think it's easy to follow what you're doing. I don't know. Um, the guidance counselor at the school didn't have a problem with it. She was just in awe of the fact that I had dinosaurs in Santa hats. <laughs> and really, she was just in love with the fact that my kid brought her a card. She thought it was super cool. Okay, so we have our sentiment there. Christmas time is here. Wishing you all the joy of the holiday season. And I have pictures of the card I made before at the end here. So the reason I like to leave the back flap not folded is because I can add a little piece of white or off-white cardstock to, for a little place to write. So I've gone through my little scrap bin there and pulled out a piece of off-white cardstock and I'm going to score it at five by one and a half inches. So there will still be a little bit of that chevron paper peeking out. And it's not a ton of space to write a message. This isn't some place you would write your whole Christmas um, letter. <laughs> I think that my son just wrote his name. Just wrote, Love Luca, Happy Christmas or something. Love Luca. And um, that was all. And he wrote it in pencil, so who knows what it really says, right? <laughs> you can't hardly read it. But I'm just going to add this right here to the back. And you can see those chevrons kind of poking out just a little bit. And there's a nice place to write a short message. And we're going to go ahead and put it in an envelope. I'll show you how it folds all up to go into an envelope. Maybe. I thought I did that. There we go. Tuck all the dinosaur pieces into the box. <laughs> pull the flaps up. And then you can put it right inside a regular A2 size envelope. And I have sent these through the mail. They do require a little bit extra postage. I mostly hand deliver these. Just because they are a little bit. Oh, there's the envelope. They are a little bit um, big but they stuff it in the envelope and I think it's perfect and it's super fun. Um, kids love to get cards. My kids love it when I make them interactive cards, especially pop-up cards because they're just a little bit more fun than a regular old birthday card or Christmas card, right? So this is the red version of my dinosaur card. Here are photographs of the green background version of my dinosaur card. I hope you enjoyed watching this. Again, if you have any questions about what I did, please leave me a comment. I would be happy to answer your questions. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. I hope you are enjoying the Christmas series. If you have not done so already, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to reach a goal of 100 subscribers. That's my, my goal for the, this year, and I've got just a few weeks left to get that done. Thank you so much for stopping by. I have included a couple of videos for you to watch here at the end. I hope you have a really great day.